every Thursday, we will have the Ultimate Fighter Season 19 winners on the phone with us. Today, we are joined by Team Edgar's Corey Anderson. Corey, how are you today? I'm great. Thank you for having me on the radio. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for asking. Corey, you came up big for Team Edgar yesterday and in the competition. I mean, you took on a guy from Team Penn who had some heavy, heavy hands, Josh Clark, and your wrestling was able to edge him out there in the end. And we know that you train over at Duke Rufus, and you also have worked with Ben Askren in the past. So I think between those two, you get a pretty fair balance of, of the striking and also the wrestling. What's it been like for you being on this Ultimate Fighter ride and, and just developing your training in various aspects? Being on the show, the journey alone is just life-changing. I mean, I mean that's one thing I can say for sure. Every time anybody asks me, it was life-changing. I see things in so so many different aspects in life now and fighting more than just fighting just to fight, more than fighting just to get my name out there, more than fighting just to win. It's, you're fighting to just carry yourself as a professional athlete. You're fighting for the sport. You're fighting for the people that, that came up behind you. You're fighting for your coaches in your corner. You're fighting for the people that fought years before you. So it's, it's great. It's, I came with a whole new attitude, a whole new personality from the whole experience, you know, dealing with coaches that you know don't know at all from Adam and Next thing you know, six weeks later, they kind of like your best friend, and you trust everything they tell you. It's just you got to trust in your coaches. You just help you build trust and faith in other people around you, and they're going to do everything they can to help you at all times. So it's definitely has molded me into a lot better person. You had actually only trained, what, about six or seven months before uh, getting on the Ultimate Fighters, or maybe now it's been about a year you've had training. Uh, how did you feel going into that show knowing that maybe a lot of the competition or a lot of your teammates may have had a lot more experience than you? Did that affect you at all? It didn't really seem to in your fight, but how did, how was that mindset for you? It didn't really affect me. It actually was motivation, fire, fuel to the fire. Just knowing, okay, I got something I can come out here and show. I've been fighting. My first fight was March 2nd of that year. And the show started being filmed in October. So all these guys have been fighting since 2007, 2006. And it was like, okay, I've made it this far. With only six, seven months experience, that's saying something. And I was just thinking, like, just imagine. Like, I could be that guy that came on the show with only six, seven months fight experience. And I could compete with these guys at the end. I could be the, I could be crowned the best, you know. So that's just, it was that fuel to push me harder every day in practice. Anytime I felt somebody was, might be keeping up with me or doing something just as well as me or as hard as me. That mean I had to just push myself to another limit, push myself to a, a breaking point, which is just, just what you should do every day anyway. And it's just, I don't know, where you see people talking around the show, everybody talking about what they did at their other fights when they passed and how much they have seen and learned. And again, that was just something else. I could just sit there and absorb, absorb knowledge from these older guys. And me only being 23 or 24 at the start of the show, and these guys all, some of them like 30, 32, 29, they're just telling me different stories, managers, how you figure out different sponsorships and different stuff. Like, it was all great for me. It was fuel to the fire, and it was a learning experience. Because I mean, I was so young and so new to the sport. Anything anybody told me, I could just absorb it all and take it in. Just write it down in my notebook and just bring it home with me and study it and learn from it. So all of it, it was never a bad thing. Never once did I have a bad attitude about it. It was always pushing yourself more, prove these guys no matter how, how old you are, how new you are to this, you work too hard to be scared of anybody. You work too hard to be bagging down from anybody. We are all human. We are made of the same flesh and blood, the same way, and any man can fall at any time. You just have to be that person to make them fall. So we are joined. I went into everything. Uh, we are joined right now by Corey Anderson, winner last night on The Ultimate Fighter. Corey, leading up to the fight, we saw you had some trouble sleeping and you were getting really anxious leading up to the fight. Is that something that happens all the time? No, no, I, don't, I really just can't explain how, what was going on with that. that was, it was kind of scary for me because, like I said, I wasn't sleeping. And that's just 
thing about Pat, I'm usually calm going into any battle. I wrestled through college. I wrestled my whole life. You know, I can the night before a match, like I always knew I was the well trained guy. I always pushed myself hard. I always did all the right things, so I knew I was prepared going into my matches and my fights. So it's kind of like I can go in calm. I go in smiling. I don't get mad. I don't get anxious. Anything. I get a little nervous, but everyone does. And you know, I always do my best. I come out, capitalize on what I have to, and sometimes I make mistakes. But for some reason, going into this fight, I think it's because I actually first time ever living in a, a, a house with your opponent. It's just weird. And like I said, I had no problem with Josh. I actually liked Josh. I had before the show when we was out there in Vegas, we actually ended up working out one day. We didn't work out together, but we was in the same weight room together, working out like side by side. And I liked his work ethic, and he seemed like mine. Like we were just pushing each other without even talking. So I think that's what the most part was. I was kind of scared to, I guess I don't like hurting people. I'm a fighter, but I'm not a fighter in the streets. I've never want to hurt anybody. I don't fight outside the cage. I don't start problems outside. When I get in the cage, it's just a job I have to do. And the thought that maybe I could hurt this guy, like I hurt past, past or previous opponents, like I just kind of, I was, I would have felt bad having to come home and live with somebody for the rest of the show. Knowing that I did something like that to somebody, I guess. I'm too much of a nice guy, I guess you could say, outside of the sport. So it's kind of my personal emotions getting into it. Now, uh, one of the things we saw last night, you talk about emotions, is you seem to get a little upset with, um, I think it was Roger Zapata who was talking about the uh, the fact that wrestling's not hard. You seem to take that a little personal. Uh, that, that's just that's something else. So I just try to keep in my head. I try to turn the other cheek as much as I can and, like I said, with him, just you just have to know Roger. You have to be around Roger. And that's just the type of person he was. He was a he's a loud mouth. I mean, before we even got in the show, it seemed like that's how he was. And I seen him talking and stuff at the tryout. It's kind of like he was really talking about something he had no clue of. Like I said, it was something I dedicated my life, my life to, my whole life. I done been through so much and seen so many people fail and so many people succeed. And it means so much, and especially being a wrestling coach. I was a college wrestling coach at the time and coaching these kids. And at the time, I was missing my team. I missed coaching. And it was just the way he was kind of knocking and saying it's so simple. But I have so many kids that come to me constantly asking for help, working their behinds off to be the best. And I see how hard it is, and they struggle, and they steady put in the hours, the grind hours. And it makes me proud as a coach and an athlete of the sport of wrestling. For somebody to come outside of wrestling to come in and just think it's so easy, it, it's anybody can do it. It's like a Geico commercial, so easy a caveman can do it. <laughs> pretty much what he was saying, and it kind of it rubbed me wrong. Like I said, being a coach, I took real offense to that because I see kids that come in and try, try, try their hardest all day, every day of the year, and they just can't succeed in it because it's not an easy sport. And right, it's just like me going into jujitsu now. Everybody says it's gonna be easy for you, but it's not. It's something I'm, it's going to take time for me to get. And the fact anybody can say anybody's profession is something that they've dedicated their whole life to get good at is easy, which is very disrespectful. You didn't think about the other people in the world that's doing what they have to do to be the best in the sport. So this kind of rubbed me wrong. And I got emotional with that as well. One of the things that interested me on last night's show was that following the fight and the, and the result was – there was one scorecard that was a nineteen nineteen. <laughs> when you heard that, were you at all like shocked? I was worried for sure. When they said that it did my gut kinda of drop. Like what what fight was it, Judge Watson? Like, right. what like if I lose this fight right now with some BS call, this is gonna be crazy. Like I might I might lose it. You know, because I had an awesome fight, I don't know what that loss that feeling of losing in MMA years yet, because I, I mean, I hadn't, uh, it was weird. It was like I hadn't lost, so I was scared of that. And I don't know, and I've never had outside it, so you got three rounds, so I know I can, I got that third round, so I can always build up the score, but having two, only two rounds in a fight like that, it's kind of, it's nerve wracking, you know, you got two rounds about to do what you got, or it might go to the third round, but even then, even then, you know, okay, um, now it's the third round. Uh, I got to pick it up. I got to do a couple more submissions attempts. You can add up the score. We're only two rounds. You never want to leave it in the hands of the judges. And I wanted to finish the fight off at the end, but I didn't. And he had a few submissions attempts, and some people judged those a little different. So it was it was, it was was weird. Uh, it was a weird feeling for sure, just wondering, like, man, 
Is he two rounds going to screw me? Did he just give me because of a few submission attempts or those couple of punches he landed? Right. But at the same time, I felt confident that I did enough to feel, uh, win that fight. And then following that, you know, what they showed us on the show was that you had said you were disappointed, though, with your performance, that you felt you could have done more in the first round. Was it true that, you know, when you get in there, even though it wasn't like in, let's say, a big stadium or anything, that you do, in fact, get octagon jitters when you know that you're performing for the first time in front of a guy like Dana White, in front of guys like Frankie Edgar and BJ Penn and... The knowing that the whole world is watching, did that bring on any nerves for you at all? No, not at all. I got tough to go to every match. I wrestled on the big stage and the wrestling community, the national finals, the main goal everybody wants. You got, the end of the night is what, 11 o'clock at night, you got one stage in the middle of the arena, all the spotlights on you and one other guy wrestling to see who's the best. And you got people watching on TV, internet, and you got people like, and I figured once I faced that, it was that killed all my nerves. I could do public speaking. I can do anything now. So that wasn't the thought at all. I don't pay any attention to the people around the cage. That's just those are just blemishes in my vision. So the thing that really was getting me is the canvas. That's what was making it so hard. I couldn't figure out how to get gripping on that canvas. The canvas is different, I guess. You oh, say it's kind of like a denim blue jean, so it's kind of <laughs> slippery. And I don't have the best of feet. My feet kind of rough and nasty, so it wasn't kind of grabbing the mat the way I would on the uh, the rubber mats or the foam mats that you have in practice or in other typical fights. So it just took me forever to figure out how to get my footing down so I can move, throw punches, and move out the way at the same time, which was part of the reason why I ended up I wasn't throwing as many combos as you could hear Frankie screaming. In the background, right. I just didn't want to throw a punch and slip in or anything because I couldn't get my foot. So I guess you can say I played a better safe than sorry that first time. Hey, you, you need to do what you, you need to do, and uh, you know you can't fault anyone for that. And you earlier were talking about uh, the judges and how you can't leave it in the hands of the judges. And Corey, I don't want you to reveal too much, but last night on the preview of next week's episode, they pretty much show an absolute melee and craziness that ensues over judges' decisions. Um, based on just what we saw on the preview, is is it as crazy next week as we're led to believe? It's just going to be a good one. It's going to be a wild one to see. I can say it's just like they say, never leave it in the hands of the judges. And that's pretty much like I was saying. Like, I was kind of scared in my situation. Try to finish as much as you can. Do what you can. If you can, don't let them stop the fight. Do everything as clean as you can. It is, you got to always be cautious of what's going on. Like, in the case, never let the refs do anything to take you out of your advantage. And that's, it's just, uh, it's going to be a good one. That's all. All right. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, we will definitely look forward to that. Corey, thank you so much for your time and joining us here on the MMA Fight Corner. We'll look forward to seeing you move on here. And the next phase of the tournament for you would be the semifinals. So we're looking forward to that. All right. Thank you for having me on the show. I hope you guys enjoyed me. And uh, everybody, make sure you're watching The Ultimate Fighter every Wednesday. It's going to be a great season.